Earlier, we saw how to design a 3D environment using imported models. But what if we want to make something like a room that has walls, doors, ramps, and other things, but we don't want have any models handy? That's where CSG comes to the rescue. CSG stands for Constructive Solid Geometry. It allows you to build complex geometry using primitive shapes, combining them in different ways. So let's look at CSG and how it works, and then we'll use it to make a new environment for a character to move around in. Start with a spatial scene and then add a child and type CSG in the search box and you'll see a list of the different CSG nodes we have to choose from. These different shapes can then be combined into other ones. Let's start with a box. So here we have a CSG box and you'll see in the properties over here we can set the size but we can also set the operation union, intersection, or subtraction. And that's going to be how different shapes are combined. So let's give the CSG box a child of a cylinder. And now we see we have a cylinder here. And we can change the cylinder number of sides to make it more round. We could stretch it taller to make it taller. And because it's set on union, these two shapes are going to be combined into a single shape. But let's try setting it instead to intersection. See, now we only get the part where the two shapes overlap. I'll turn snapping off here and you can see it a little cleaner. So now we only get the two parts overlapping. And then subtraction is the opposite. The cube will have the cylinder subtracted from it. So you can see if we could center it here, we're cutting a hole right through the center of the cube. We change the radius here so we're not quite so big. Right, you could rotate it and you're cutting a hole through it like that. So any CSG shape is going to have the children applied to it in order using whatever operation they have chosen. So let's make something useful. I'm going to delete this cylinder so that we're starting with uh, a box. And so this box is going to be our room, the walls of the room. Let's make it big. I'm going to set the width to 20 and the depth to 20. So we have a large room. And I'm going to set the height to, let's say, 5. So that's our room. But we want to be inside the room, not outside it. So I'm going to click Invert Faces. And now the inside becomes the surface, not the outside. And the, the camera will automatically hide the one you're looking at so you can see it. Uh, let's turn snapping back on so everything's going to be... Linked. And I like to move it up so that it's at the level of the grid so that I can see the grid on the floor. So there's our room. Now if we stick our player in here, it's going to fall right through. So we need to turn on Use Collision. So let's na name this CSG Room, and we're going to save it. And let's add our character in here. So there's our character. And recall that when we play the game, you're going to be in capture mode, mouse capture mode. So we want to add a script to this and to this and add that code in from our last tutorial. Let's give it a try. And now you'll see we can walk around inside the room and we are all good. Now let's add some features of this room. As a start, I'm going to add some internal walls, so separated into two separate areas. And I want to add a ledge around part of it that will have a ramp that we can walk up to. And so I'm going to make that in a separate scene. And we're going to use the CSG combiner. The CSG combiner node lets you organize your CSG nodes into groups. So for example, this is going to be our ledge. And so it will combine the objects underneath it, but not with other ones in the scene. 
So we're going to start with a couple of boxes. Okay, and I've added two boxes, a CSG box and a box as a child. And I've made these both fairly thin, and they're going to go in the corner of one of the rooms. But now I want to ramp so I can get up to it. And to do that, we're going to use the CSG polygon. Now the way a po CSG polygon works is it takes a polygon, and here you see it starts out being a square, and then it ex extrudes it into a, into a 3D shape. And so for a ramp, we want our polygon to have three sides, so I'm going to reduce this to three. And now you can grab these points and you can drag them around and turn that into your ramp. And so here I've done this, and if you want them to be perfectly lined up, you might want to go over here and actually type in the numbers, or you can drag the points, whichever works better for you. So back over in our room, we can instance our ledge object and place it so that it is aligned with the walls, and we have a ramp that we can walk up. Let's try it out. I can walk up the ramp, and I'm on the ledge. Okay. For my second feature, the wall, I'm going to make a solid wall that has a height of 5, so it'll be the same height as the room itself, floor to ceiling. And then I'm going to make a, I want to make a doorway in it. So we're going to add a child CSG box, and we're going to set it to subtraction mode. And that way we can place this so that it cuts a hole something like that. And if we add that into our scene, now we have a, a wall. Uh, you could try doing some other things. You could use a cylinder shape instead to give you an arched doorway. Uh, if you don't cut the hole, we can have a solid wall. So we can make our room layout as complex as we want. Feel free to do it differently than me. I'm going to show you a final layout here in the next scene. So here's my final scene. I've added a material to each of the objects just to give it a nice tan color. I just changed the albedo color on each object's uh, material. And I've placed a couple of walls. Here's an example of a using a cylinder to cut out an arched doorway. And then there's my ramp over there. So I have some rooms that I can explore. And I can walk through the doorways, go into the other rooms, and so on. Now the room's pretty featureless right now as it is, but you can spice it up a little just by putting a couple of lights in. So here I've added a couple of lights to give it some visual appeal, and I added a few of our crates that we made in the first video to have something to interact with. So now if I go in here, I've got a, a green light in this room. And over here in this room, we have a, a light there in the corner. And we can go up on the ledge and uh, knock over the crates. So hopefully you're starting to see how powerful CSG nodes can be in building objects for your game. They can be really useful for creating a quick prototype level to test out your character movement on, or to make some complex shapes that you need for your game without having to go over into Blender or something like that to model it. Just keep in mind that the, the more complex these trees of nodes get, the more performance impact you're going to have. So it's important to group them in these CSG combiners and don't try to combine too many objects all into one. So you know, rather than having each of these objects all be part of one tree, we have them separated into different ones, which is going to keep the performance impact uh, as low as possible. All right, hopefully this was useful to you. In the next video, we're going to look at using this level to make a first-person perspective character instead of our third-person perspective character. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.